Hey everybody, Dominic here. Uh, this is my first video, I think, without a beard. So you might not recognize me, but uh, I'll probably be clean shaven for a little while. I think it's getting way too gray and making me look really ancient. So um, I figured I'd shave it off for a while and maybe get, some, maybe get a tan or something. Anyways, um, I am making this video today because I am excited to tell you guys about my cylinder head cooling modification. Um, it is now available. Um, it's a limited run. This first run's pretty small, um, but I have more being built right now, and I'm really excited to uh, hopefully meet all the market's demands on this. Um, this is something you want for your car. All right, uh, I want it in my car. Everyone at the shop is has been waiting like crazy. They want it in their car. I get customers that want it. This here is gonna it's gonna change our cars it's going to change the reliability it's going to make them better it's going to make them you know more powerful it's it's great and so if you saw my reverse cooling as applies to subaru's video then you might have an idea of where i'm going with this if you haven't i say just you watch it and then come back to this so on youtube probably next to this one reverse cooling as it applies to subaru's um uh, youtube forward slash get a dom tune um, anyways, in that video, I discuss cooling in the Subaru and reverse cooling and what it does and what's good about it. And I touch on it a little bit that in, in the Subaru, there's an issue with the cooling to, to cylinder four. And so my modification improves the cooling to cylinder four. Now I say cylinder four, it's not cylinder four, it's not the cylinder four, it's the combustion chamber for cylinder four. And that's really important. Keeping the combustion chamber cool is extremely important in minimizing detonation. And I cover that in the reverse cooling video when I explain all the good stuff. Well, what I have pretty much, I believe, I have solved the cylinder four failure problem. There's all kinds of articles on the internet that have all sorts of speculation with no facts and no data to back any of it up. And I have chuckle at many of them that I see um, and read, but now I have got a mountain of data and uh, I'm pretty certain that I've got it figured out. I'm not going to tell all in this video because it would take me a long time, but I'm going to touch on a few points just to help you out and understand why I did what I did. So, in the EJ, cylinders one and two, how often, or sorry, cylinders one and three, how often do they fail? Meh, like hardly ever, right? And if they do, it's going to be a bearing or something from oil supply or something like that. It's rare that you break a piston in cylinder one or three or have any signs of excessive detonation in cylinders one and three. But two and four, on the other hand, there's some issues. Well, some people say it's the fuel injectors, not the fuel injectors. Some people say it's the exhaust manifold. It's not the exhaust manifold. It's the cooling. It's the programming. It's the location of the knock sensor. It's a lot of, the, it's a lot of that. But overall, it's the cooling. And how do we know that? We know that because you can put an aftermarket EMS in the car, remove all the extra programming that's in there from the factory, where cylinder four gets extra timing and cylinder two gets extra timing, which is programmed in from the factory. You can put an aftermarket EMS, have those set to zero, and cylinder four still fails. Right? So it's not all programming. Yeah, I mean, in 08, when they changed the programming for emissions purposes, um, they made it worse. Yes, they absolutely made it worse. And um, that's easily fixable with a tune by changing oblique closed loop thresholds and adjusting um, just a handful of things associated with the timing that Subaru had to do to keep it really lean for way too long and into boost towards detonating and knocking that kind of stuff and then dump a bunch of fuel in the cylinder really quick, really quick to try and cool everything down. Um, so yeah, it got worse in 08. Some people think the pistons are different or whatever, but um, it was mostly programming. But again, you can go after more EMS, at Mark EMS, still fail for cylinder four. So that right there is a huge indication that it's a mechanical issue. And then you get through an aftermarket header on it that's equal length and everything's freaking groovy and cylinder four will still fail on it. You can get the fuel system routed a whole different way, put different injectors in it, you know, have parallel series, feed this one first, feed this one last, whatever, and cylinder four will still fail on it. Okay, so there's a mechanical issue. What is it? It's cooling to the head. Cooling to the combustion chamber of cylinder four is inadequate. You can look at the way the piston fails, you can follow all the trends, and you can use temperature data that I acquired using an RTD. 
I used this fitting, plugged it into the head like so, and monitored the temperature of the coolant right behind the cylinder head. Now, it doesn't tell the cylinder head temperature, the actual aluminum temperature, but what it did show is shows a trend of the coolant behind that head being very hot, getting poor flow um, uh, to, to the chamber and doing insignificant cooling or insufficient cooling. And if you look at the, at the design of the cooling system on that side of the engine, it's very, very apparent. On cylinders one and three, the coolant enters the bottom right between cylinders one and three, goes up to the bottom half of the cylinder, into the head, up over the, cha the, the chambers, back into the, uh, the cylinders, um, sleeves, out the center crossover type, pipe, uh, out the front radiator water pump, right? Right there. On the driver's side, or sorry, two and four side, because now the driver's on the left side, right? Uh, cylinder two and four, it's not like that. The coolant goes into um, the, the bottom of the block in front of cylinder two, and then into the head, and then diagonally across the chamber and out between the middle of cylinders two and four. There's almost nothing to promote flow of coolant over cylinder four. Like maybe maybe a third of it, just maybe a third of it gets good flow. So um, RTD, show me the temperature trends. They're kind of disturbing. And my modification, which I will show you now, right this guy right here um, that there is done in the same port that I put the RTD in um, and that T as you see there at the end of the hose hooks up to the heater core line the return line right to the suction of the water pump it promotes coolant flow pulls it across that combustion chamber from cylinder four um, not too much not too little the importance was the sizing of the fitting as well um, had to get that whole size right, help keep the, the flow balanced. But I have here created better flow over the combustion chamber of cylinder four, help keep those temperatures even, and try and get cylinder four as much cooling as the rest of the engine, and try and get its knock threshold down like the other three cylinders. And we're pretty much there. Um, I'm really excited about it. It took too long to build them, but uh, I've got another another machine shop doing the next batch of, uh, of, of the kit here. So I'm really excited. The first run, like I said, it's a little small, but um, it, uh, I got a second run already in the works. So if you if you want them, you want them. I'm going to say if you want them, they're great. It's uh, everyone in the shop, like I said, wants one. And uh, and I have, them on my, on my, on, I have them on my cars now. So I'm so excited. I'm stuttering. Uh, anyways. So you can get them, uh, call tier one if you want Liberty Lake. Um, you can email me, Dominic at getadomtune.com. Hit us up the Facebook page, um, you know, whatever you want. We're, we're going to have them, and I'm sure eventually we'll have uh, other vendors around the country that have them once I get the larger order in. So uh, th this, is, this is really exciting. Um, I know that we've been battling this for years since the EJ was, was produced. You know, and we started getting horsepower on them. Cylinder four has been just the the bane of everyone's existence. We're, we're the butt of jokes from the Evo guys and Ford guys and Mazda guys. You know, well, we don't have to be anymore because with this and proper programming and relocation and take care temp sensor and proper fuel pressure management and a few other things too, right? But with all that stuff, we can make these engines as reliable as 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 they can be, um, taking into account other geometrical, you know. Uh, issues with them but this is uh this is gonna be sweet i look forward to it um and i look forward to everyone else having uh as much luck and fun with their cars as possible and i really hope this um i hope this does everything that you guys want to do so thanks for watching again dominic at get a dom com or tier one in liberty lake uh, in either of those two places you can get it from. Uh, other than that, like and subscribe, share, dislike, you know, whatever you want. And uh, I, I would appreciate it if you if you spread it around. Um, I really want the Subaru community to have a better, more powerful, more reliable engine than we've had in the past. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Have a good night.